Hey, happy Friday. Welcome back to another Friday Tech Workshop. I'm Joseph, a senior developer advocate with AppSmith. And this week, we're going to self-host an LLM and connect it to a local AppSmith instance so we can build a chat app that runs completely local within that network without relying on a third-party API. We're going to use Olama to run the Llama 3 model on a MacBook Pro. This model is optimized to run on regular hardware without the need for a high-end GPU, and it's still powerful enough and has enough knowledge and its 3 billion parameters to work for most use cases. So once we have Olama running in the terminal, we'll connect from AppSmith and build an interface for the chat app. And then from there, you can use any one of our API or database integrations to build your own internal tools that leverage AI without sending that data out of your own network. So let's get started by first downloading Olama and the Llama 3 model. All right, so before we get started, you might notice that my setup is a little different than usual. I am running on a different computer today because I tried to do this on a Mac that had 8 gigs of RAM and it just could not keep up. I got the model started, it said it was running, but as soon as I asked it a question, it just crawled to a halt. So if you want to do this on your own local machine with Docker and AppSmith running uh, right there on the same machine next to it, you probably need 16 gigs of RAM uh, or at least a newer processor or GPU. However, it ran fine on a MacBook M1 with 16 gigs of RAM. So that's what I'm on now. Uh, normally I, I have another computer I use for my recording setup and yeah, it just could not handle it. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to run Docker and AppSmith and the model all on the same machine. Uh, but still, it works without a high-end GPU. So it's running on some, uh, some basic, you know, standard modern hardware. But I guess I need to upgrade my older machine that I'm using for recording. So, all right. So with that out of the way... Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about before we jump into actually building is all this Llama stuff. What's Olama, Llama 3, all the different models, uh, and what's the difference between you know, the app and the model. So Olama is this installer that you can download for Mac or Windows or Linux, and it will manage downloading different models and then running them and getting it running just in the terminal and opening a port so you can use the API. So it handles all that stuff for you and you just tell it what model you want to use. It's a lot like a uh, package manager. Um, and, and so it has access to all these different models that you can use. The Llama models are the main ones and today we're going to use Llama 3.2. But you can also use Google Gemma. They have Mistral and a bunch of other models in here. And all of that can be downloaded and ran through the one Olama program. So let's start out first. I'm going to download the Mac app here. And you can follow along and do this on uh, any OS. And most of the instructions here, the second half of the video, should all be the same in order to interact with the model once it's running and connect from a local AppSmith instance. So I've got the model, or rather the uh, Olama installer downloaded. So let's open this up. It's a zip file and it's going to have um, just a regular app, like a .app file that you can drag into the applications folder. And uh, I've actually got it open. I want to walk through and redo this, um, but I need to close the app first. So let's back out, drag this into the applications folder. And so I'll replace that and that's it for installing it. The first time you open it, it's going to ask for a uh, drive permission to be able to access and download that model. And so uh, it is asking here for permission just to download any new app from the internet. But I think it's going to skip this next prompt. Um, you should see one on your end about approving drive permission. So go ahead and approve that. And then you'll notice this little llama icon in the menu bar. And there's an option to quit Olama, but that's it. There's no other option because everything is done through the terminal. Um, I think if there's an update, it will show here. It'll, it has a UI option to run the update, but that's it. Everything else is done in the terminal. So you want to have Olama running and on the same machine as an AppSmith um, instance, as a local AppSmith instance. 
Now we have uh, lots of documentation on that and several different videos and there's tons of different ways to deploy it. So I'm not gonna go into deploying AppSmith today. We're just gonna run it on a local instance that I already have set up. So if I go to localhost, you can see I've already got AppSmith running and you can check out the links in the description for uh, our, our guides on getting that set up on your local. So we're just uh, skipping past that today and starting with a local AppSmith instance running in Docker. And then I have the Olama program here that's downloaded and I've opened it up. And so the next thing is to actually download a model and install it. So I'm gonna pull up the terminal and I actually wanna delete the model and run through the installer one more time, just so you see all the steps involved. So you don't need to run this one. I'm removing the Llama 3 model real quick before we install it, because otherwise it skips that download step. So you'll want to run Olama run and then the model name, Llama 3.2 in this case. And that is all you have to do to get started. It's going to download the model for you. There's a couple supporting files that come with it, but the main file is two, uh, two gigabytes. So the model itself and the three billion parameters that are included in this model are all in this one big file. Uh, and then there's maybe three or four extra uh, supporting files that go with it. And you'll see here in just a minute, as soon as it's done downloading, it starts the model and it runs it on your machine as a server so that you can connect to it from other applications. You can use their API or you can just chat with it directly in the terminal. And here in just a minute, when the last one finishes, you'll see we get uh, so there, there, it verified it, it uh, says success, and then we'll get a prompt here so that we can start talking to the model. So I'm gonna ask it, what is AppSmith? And that is quick, it's just instantly responding, and this works totally offline. If I disconnect from the internet here, um, you'll still be able to interact with the model because all of that knowledge, that, uh, that two gigabyte file, that's got a lot of context on different topics I want to have it write some JavaScript. Let me say JavaScript here. Write a JS function. Okay, so let's just see if it kind of knows the structure of the uh, Shopify endpoint and then how it can write some code here for us. So you can see it's using the dot then notation. Uh, so it's trying to do it async, like it's. Um, running the query to get the data and then doing a dot then. I was kind of asking for just the filter, um, but it's pretty cool that it understands that much about coding and it's not like this is a model specifically trained for coding. It's just a general purpose one that happens to be pretty small size, lightweight, portable. Um, and then there's an even smaller one that's specifically for mobile, but this one's pretty good general purpose. So I'm, I'm impressed with the fact that it's running on my local and can do this much and that quick. And it was really easy to set up. So once you have it running, you download the model. Um, you saw that it was just one command. So I, I downloaded the installer, drug it into the app folder, and then ran that one command. Olama, uh, sorry, that's the remove that I did ahead of time. Um, so Olama run and then the model name. And that's it. Then you're up and running and you can chat with it right here in the terminal. You can also go to, if you go to localhost, and I think it is 11.434. Yeah, and that will verify that Olama is running. Um, I mean, it's obviously running because we just saw it in the terminal, but if you want to check it out in the web, uh, they just have this like status page for it. So then the same port here, 11.434, it is running a endpoint that we can use for an API for text generation. So it's slash API slash generate, and we're going to set up an API in AppSmith to interact with that endpoint. All right, so I'm gonna copy this URL and let's add a new API here. And we'll make it a post. I'm gonna call it send prompt. And then when you're using localhost, if you're running this in Docker and you want to connect to something outside of AppSmith, outside of Docker, 
but still on your local machine. Instead of localhost, it is host.internal.docker. And then the port number is the same, the rest of this is the same, and for this case, it is uh, API slash generate. So then we need a body. And in here, you're gonna have three different um, parameters that we're sending in. So we wanna know what model are we trying to run, and that's gonna be Llama 3.2. And then stream, we want to make this false. If you have stream equals true, or if you leave it out, it defaults to true. And that's going to keep sending a response in chunks with just pieces of it. That's good for the user if you display it, if you show it on the UI and keep updating it as pieces come in. But I want to keep this simple. And so the user might have to you know, seem like they're waiting a little longer before they see something, but uh, overall it's just as quick, maybe even faster to turn off stream. They just don't see the partial stuff come in. And so then the last thing we need is the prompt itself. And again, I'm just gonna say, tell me about AppSmith. And I think that's everything. We've got the three values here that we need in the body. It's a post, and you just want to make sure you swap out that local host for host.internal.docker, um, and then it's the port number 11434 api.generate, or a slash generate. So let's check this out, see if we're getting anything back. And oh, we've got an error. Execution error. Is it host internal docker or docker.internal? I always forget this and have to look it up. Post.docker.internal. Let's try that. And I think this is it, but I'm probably going to have to adjust the timeout. It is 10 seconds by default, and I think that was it. We just timed out. Yeah. So this time the error is query timeout. I think uh, I had that URL wrong the first time. So now here we're going to bump the timeout to 60 seconds or a full minute and give this one more shot. And it's already responding. If we had stream equals true, you know, we'd be able to see some partial responses, but uh, setting that to false will just make sure that once you've got a 200 response, then you know that's the full answer. It'll also give you a uh, completion reason I think or uh, done equals true so if you turn stream to true or you leave it out and it defaults to true then you can use this done field or the done reason uh, to determine if that's you know the full one or not but I prefer just getting it back once and knowing that's it so all right so we got a response back now we're gonna build a UI so that we can pass in that message the uh, the prompt all right, so let's go to the UI tab, and I'm going to use a text widget to display the response from the AI. And then below that, we'll have an input to ask a question and a button. So we'll have a send prompt here. And this should run the API, so we'll set its on click to run that send prompt query. And then right here, we'll use the input for the prompt. So you'll want to update the query to reference this input. So back to the query here, to the body. And you can do this a couple ways. I can either go inside the quotes here and do the double curly braces and then reference input one. But I prefer to put the quotes around everything or the double curly braces rather so that you don't have to put multiple sets of them for each field. So it's just one set for that. And then right here, I can reference input one dot text. And so now if we enter a prompt from the UI and click send, we should see it update on the UI. Um, I just need to connect this here to show the response. That's the last piece. So here we will look at the send prompt dot data and then inside of that, the dot response. 
All right, and I'm gonna make this a fixed height with scroll. Let's do small and get rid of the bold. And then just shrink this back up. Okay, so now let's test it out with another prompt. Let's write JavaScript to convert base64 to binary. I uh, misspelled right, but it tends to be pretty good at uh, understanding what you mean and, and not having a problem with typos like that. So we'll see what we get. All right, and there we go. Yeah, so it's, it's written to JavaScript. Uh, it looks like it's doing a while and going through each individual character. Um, there's plenty of libraries you could use to do this as well, but if you want to do it one character at a time, that's definitely a, a valid approach there. So it's pretty cool how much knowledge this thing has and how much it can do totally offline. Like, I'm just gonna kill my Wi-Fi here, and uh, let's ask it one more data sources. Let's ask what data sources it knows about for AppSmith. If I could type while I'm talking. So AppSmith is able to run offline to an extent we have a separate version that's completely offline, our air-gapped version, and that's gonna have several changes that help it run safely offline without any issues, but it will work offline temporarily. Uh, and so you can see I've got my Wi-Fi turned off, and this just responded with info about specific AppSmith data sources. It knows that we have Google Sheets and Airtable uh, and Postgres and all these different data sources, so this is pretty cool. That two gigabyte file with three billion parameters, it has a ton of knowledge packed in there. And you can use this to build these AI assistants that work totally offline, either without internet or without traffic leaving your network. So you might actually have internet access, but you just don't want to send all of your sensitive customer data to some third party AI. So hosting your own LLM is a great alternative. It's also a good way to be able to own that data and not worry about the privacy concerns. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover for this week. We went over how to run the Llama 3 model or any of those other models from Olama. You can do that locally on Mac, Windows, or Linux, and then run it on the same machine as your AppSmith server so that you can connect from AppSmith and build that AI chatbot or any other AI features you can build that into your internal tools without sending your customer data out to another network or third party service. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions on this one or comments or ideas for future workshops, feel free to drop a comment below. So thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next week.